Hey everybody, welcome to Haunted Dash Films, the place where you go to learn about photography and RC car how-to videos. I'm Taylor Tomla, welcome back to the channel, and I'm so glad you decided to take a little bit of time out of your busy little day to come here and listen to this video. Today we're going to be talking about shooting live bands and how I do them. Now shooting with multiple track audio and multiple cameras is now within everybody's grasp. Whether you're shooting a live concert or acoustic set or a band practice, I'm going to show you how, how I do it. So let's get to the video. Filming live music is one of the few parts of filmmaking that actually requires a fair amount of equipment. If you want to have more than one camera angle, odds are you're going to need more than one camera. It's important to note that filming with all the same types of cameras makes your shoot a whole hell of a lot easier, as well as shooting the same frame rate. What happens if you don't? Well, something called sync drift happens. And when you're, when you're working with multiple cameras and multiple audio, okay, and you have it all put into a multi-cam clip in Final Cut Pro or you're in... Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, something called sync drift happens. And that is when it starts to play awesome at the beginning of the clip and then towards the middle, but towards the middle to the end, it starts to get out of sync. You'll notice that the, the drums won't be hitting the same, same timing, the guitar strums will be off, the mouse will be, movement will be off, and it will infuriate you to no end. And it'll also actually make you probably have to start your whole thing over because you'll have to take that single clip, you'll have to render that single clip out, and put it into whatever frame rate it is to match the other set of frame rates to make sure that that works right and then put it back in that multi-clip and then restart your whole thing over again. Now I may be wrong about that and there might be an easier way, but for right now, that's my only option. So make sure you're shooting it in the same frame rate. So the equipment I use is, one, is two DSLR cameras, three iPhones, and two iPads. Um, all shoot in the same frame rate and resolution. Wall chargers for all my devices, which is a precaution in case you go over an hour and a half. A couple of fast chargers just in case you don't have access to any outlets. Um, and believe me, it happens more often than you think. So they can, these guys could be a real lifesaver. Um, plenty of tripods, which are crucial for level shots with no shaking. They're also good for lining up a shot and letting it run the entire, the entire gig in one frame. Wide angle lenses for all your devices. These are perfect for shooting live shows. We'll guarantee that you'll have the action captured in that shot. You won't miss it because it gives you a wider area. This will allows you, also allow you to get closer with your cameras. And since I'm using tripod, uh, tablets, I, I use the tablet mounts on my tripods as well. Uh, you need some sort of audio recording device like a zoom recorder that plugs directly into the PA system so that you can, then you can use in post and add to the multi-cam clip at the end. Because um, the capturing audio from the cameras will not sound very good at all. They will sound, I mean, you'll have crowd noise, you'll have all that stuff versus right off the PA, you won't have anything. A flash drive is good because most of the modern PA guys have the ability to plug a flash drive into their, their board and then download the individual tracks rather than one solid track, which is just fantastic for people like me who love to edit things like that. Uh, it makes it way more easier. I can, I can, I can ro raise or lower certain tracks in, in the song and it makes it lot better for me to have that much control because of editors like me we tend to be control freaks and the more control of media we have the better and the final product will be wear clothing that's all black so you blend in with the dark and not so you don't distract the performers from their doing their their performance and you also blend in with the environment so it's not distract the crowd as well Checking your sound early and often is a good practice to get into. Now when you're checking your sound, you want to make sure you go around and make sure your audio recorders are recording, that your cameras are still rolling because during the show some things like that will happen, they'll just turn off. Uh, you also have sound issues on your recorders. Now mm, these are kind of common culprits that can kind of happen to you. Uh, incorrect camera uh, or audio equipment settings, you got cross wires, you got weak batteries, you got close proximity to other electronics. Things like that will happen. So make sure you're aware of these things during the show. That way you don't have no problems at all during the performance. So when I'm done doing this stuff, I'm going to utilize Final Cut Pro's 
automatic synchronization program, which is just an amazing, amazing piece of technology. It makes my job so much easier to take all the multi-cam clips and put them up together. But it doesn't help to hurt, help it along. To, you, know, you may have to nudge one of your video feeds back and forth manually during the, the syncing process, but it never hurts to have a nice common sync point, okay? Have the drummer, during the performance, or before the performance, have the drummer hit this, a single snare drum surrounded by a few seconds of silence on either end. So it could be either the front or the back. Just making sure there's one nice solid snare hit. Announce what song and what take you're on as well. All these things should be taken care of, uh, what well, should be taken care of in Final Cut Pro, shooting with multiple cameras. Ensure that you have plenty of creative shots to work with. You need to decide and communicate between you and your second shooter as well. That's a big thing. You need to make sure you have your eyes on the main performer. Make sure you have close-ups. Make sure you have master shots. Make sure you have instrument-only shots. These are all crucial shots that are going to come in handy during your, your, your post-process sequence. So again, I'm Taylor Tomlin. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video with me. Um, Looking forward to more videos coming up here soon about more photography stuff. I really hope this helped you out. I really do hope you out. And I hope you all take my advice and go out there and start filming some bands. Make sure if you do film a band, make sure you leave a comment down below with some links to those videos. I'd love to check them out and see how they do. Um, I'd love to see how the videos that you learned from my, my stuff here on this channel, how they turn out as well. So anyway, have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, the notification bell to notify when I get new videos out. And remember, photography isn't about great depth of field about great depth of feeling. See ya.